As time goes by and a system ages, there's parts that can become worn over time and that will need periodic inspecting or even replacement, just like with your car needing an oil change or your brakes replaced. Let's go over what could be happening when your awning's starting to have a lot of excessive movement or sagging. Once you pull the pitch arm down, the friction hinge should maintain that pitch on the system. If it seems like it's drifting or the gas strut is pushing this back up slowly, you'll want to check these bolts in the center. At this hinge, there is a nut on this side and you can use an Allen key on this side to tighten this hinge back up so it will stop drifting back and forth after you have set that pitch. To tighten this nut and bolt system on the friction hinge, you'll take a socket wrench with a half inch socket on the end and place it on this nut. And you'll use your Allen key on the other side and then you can tighten or loosen this as needed. While you are at this hinge and inspecting it, you'll want to make sure that the three washers that are in place on this hinge are all in the correct location. There's going to be one on the outside where the Allen key goes, one just on the inside of that hinge, and then another one just on the outside of the hinge, not on the outside of this plate. One of the most commonly asked questions about awnings in general is the direction of the fabric and what is happening. There's going to be a correct and incorrect direction for the fabric, kind of like the over under for toilet paper. The fabric should always be over on the awning roll. So when you overextend this awning, it is normal for the motor to continue rolling forward and roll the back fabric back this way. So to fix that, you will run the awning in the opposite direction until the, it switches the direction of the fabric on the roll tube. And then your awning is in the correct position and it will have optimal water runoff when it's in the retracted position. If that fabric is under the roll tube, it has the potential to gather more rainwater and dirt and debris and have a buildup of mold and mildew, and that will shorten the lifespan of your awning fabric. If you notice that your awning is performing poorly or it's not moving at all, and it's been a while since you've charged your battery, you'll want to find your charging adapter and make sure that battery gets fully charged and that red light turns to green. The electrical components and connections of this system are a very vital part of the system and if there's any disruption or disconnection of the electrical components, your awning will not work. So we're going to troubleshoot beginning from the charger and working our way up to the motor so that you can identify what parts are affecting your awning. When you're questioning if your battery is receiving a charge, you'll begin at where you've connected your charger to your 110 outlet. This light should always illuminate when you plug it in, regardless of if it's connecting to the battery. Because if this is disconnected from the bottom, this green light should still be on. And then once you've connected this charger to a discharged battery, this light will illuminate red, and that means that your charger is sensing that the battery has depleted and it is trying to charge it. If you're questioning if it's having the correct output for this charger, you take your multimeter and set it to the direct current voltage, and ours automatically adjusts the scale. So when we put it in to this charger, it should jump to 21 volts direct current. And if you ever forget that number or rating, it is listed on your charger. So that lets you know the charger is good. If you find that the house for your charger is illuminating with that indication of the LED light from green to red, but you're not getting a charge out of this, then you'll have to replace your entire charger because there's a short in this wiring. After you've checked your charger, you can come to this charging port at the bottom of your awning arm and check that for good voltage as well. 
This charging port is connected to the battery through the arm assembly. You'll have two wires. One is for the charging port to the battery and that will tra travel up this mount arm, down the inner arm and up the outer arm to where the battery is housed. And your other power line will be going to the motor. So it will go through this switch, up the arm, down this inner arm again, and then all the way up this outer arm to the motor at the head assembly. So to check this charging port, you place your probes into the bottom and you should get around that 20 volts direct current. And 20 volts shows that your battery is fully charged. If you're getting anything below 15 volts, you need to charge your battery. But obviously if your charger has a bad connection to the battery, it will not charge it properly. Your battery, if it's damaged, will need to be replaced by replacing the arm assembly. Following the wiring up through the arm assembly, we come to the connection point from where the charging harness connects to the wiring for the battery. Now, this can become disconnected during travel, so you'll want to make sure that this connection is secure, but if you're finding that you're not receiving voltage from your battery at that charging port, you can come here and see if it's the battery not having a charge or if there's damage in this harness connection. To do that, you'll disconnect the harness. Make sure it's plugged into your charger. Take your multimeter and then place your probes into the bottom of this harness. Now we have the 21 volts direct current coming from that charger through this harness. So that shows us that the harness is in good condition. And then our voltage problem may be from the battery. To check the battery, you take the other connection, place your probes into the bottom, and our battery has that 20 volt strip current. So our battery is good as well. Now we can check the connection at the motor to see if our motor is receiving voltage from our battery. Up towards this head assembly, you get a good view of where the battery is housed. And then behind here, you take your screwdriver and loosen those Phillips head screws inside this cover. And then your cover should come off easily after you've unsnapped it from in place. You can take this side of the cover off by removing these two screws. And here you can see the wires connected to the motor. Now, when you're checking the harness coming to the motor, it should be connected here at the bottom. Be careful not to lose your wires inside the assembly or you'll have to disconnect this whole assembly from the arm. And when you're ready, you can disconnect, place your probes into the bottom of the harness Either you or a helper activates the switch at the bottom of the mount arm. After you've checked this harness and you find that you do indeed have good voltage coming through to the motor, that means that your motor is no longer functioning properly and will need replaced. You can replace this back cover and then secure it. And then that front cover. In the case that you can't find a power source to charge your battery and you will need to perform a manual override, you can do that by removing this grommet here, setting it to the side, and make sure not to lose it because you want to replace it once you're done to prevent water from going in and damaging the motor. You can take your cordless drill or you can use a socket wrench Engage that nut that's just inside there and you use a 7 16 inch socket and you'll go counterclockwise. And that will start retracting your awning. And you can do that for retraction or even to extend your awning, just in case of an emergency when you don't have your power source. Now, 
if you're using the manual override because you have a motor failure or your battery is not working, you'll want to zip tie your awning in place because it has the potential for that motor to completely fail and the awning to spring out during travel and nobody wants that to happen. So you will take the zip tie and slide it behind the bolt just in that mounting arm. and wrap it around the awning. Once you place the zip tie on the driver side, you'll repeat that on the idler side assembly, and then your awning will be safe for travel. As an owner, you may be noticing that your fabric is wrinkled or bunched on one end of your awning, or your awning arm assembly is gapping at the top and not completely closing that outer arm over that mount arm. To fix that, you'll have to remove the screws that are securing the awning fabric through the awning rail with that poly cord. To adjust that wrinkle, you'll take your appropriate bit and use your drill and then remove that hex screw. And this screw can go through the top or the bottom of the awning rail. It just depends on your manufacturer. And then you'll repeat that on the other side as well. After you've removed both those screws at the awning rail, you'll run your awning in and out a few times and that will adjust that fabric to make it square with the awning assembly. Now you can see there's no wrinkles in our awning fabric and our outer arm is completely around that mount arm and there's no gap. So we can re-secure this with these screws and you want them about one to two inches from the end. <laughs> of the fabric and you want to secure all of the way through that cord.